Statistics show that one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. Crucially, all of these will be diagnosed by a pathologist. That's a medical doctor who studies cells and tissues to determine if a disease is present. A GP may suspect cancer and refer a patient to a surgeon who may agree with that suspicion and take a biopsy. But it is only the pathologist who will be able to diagnose the biopsy. This diagnosis will then guide all treatment that follows should it prove to be cancer. So where does it all start? A patient suspected of having cancer is sent to have a biopsy taken, a specimen of the suspected tissue. The tissue specimen is then sent to a laboratory for review by a pathologist. When it arrives at the laboratory, the specimen is assigned a number or a code so it can be tracked throughout the process. On this first day, a pathologist will examine the specimen, measure its size, describe its colour and texture and determine if there are any masses present. The pathologist then cuts the specimen into thin slices, called sections, and examines them further. Small pieces of these slices are then fixed in formalin. This hardens the tissue and prevents the tissue from breaking down any further. Following the fixing, the tissue is then dehydrated slowly. Generally on the second day, once it has been dehydrated, the tissue is then embedded in hot wax to form tissue blocks. These blocks are saved for many years for later revisions and review should they be required. A very thin section of the tissue is then cut from each block, placed on a slide and stained with two different chemical stains, hematoxylin and eosin. Later on the second day, the slides are now ready to be reviewed under the microscope by the pathologist. The pathologist reviews the slides from each block under a microscope, correlating the findings back to their earlier gross examination findings. The pathologist then makes a provisional pathology report. Further time may be required to review the case with other pathologists as part of their quality assurance program in order to be sure of the diagnosis. The pathology report is then sent to the oncologist with a definitive diagnosis and indications for recommended courses of treatment.